How much better is the new M4 iPad Pro compared to the M2 iPad Pro? Well, today we're gonna compare everything from the design, the quality, the new cameras, an Apple Pencil, the keyboard, performance, and of course, the screens. The M4 iPad Pro costs $200 more than the M2, which you can now buy at great discounts, and we'll link those down below. Now, from the top, it's hard to tell a difference. Apple made a big deal about the new thinness and lightness, and can I tell on the hand, honestly, not really. The 13 inch is the one that got really lightweight, but it is a little bit thinner, 5.3 millimeters compared to 5.9, but the weight difference is very tiny. But with that, Apple actually got rid of the ultra wide camera, so you're missing that now, but honestly, I didn't really use it. Now, even though it's a little thinner, it actually has a 9% larger battery inside, but the battery life ratings have stayed the same. Now, I'm curious if the speakers got any worse because of the thinner design. Let's go ahead and take a listen. Thankfully, the speakers sound identical. So good job, Apple. They made sure they still sound great. But one of the things that I'm noticing looking at this is that the new iPad with the M4 has better anti-reflectivity. Reflections look a little bit more muted on the M4 Pro compared to the M2 iPad Pro, and that is nice. Now the 11 inch iPad Pros have been stuck on LCD for a while, and with the M4 iPads, we have the new tandem OLED technology that Apple showed off and made a huge deal about. So let me show you that. Right now I have the brightness roughly matched, and you can see they look kind of similar. The OLED is a little bit more yellow, even the true tone turned off, but the crazy thing is, if we go ahead and crank the brightness all the way up, that's probably blown out there. Let me pick this up for you guys. We have roughly 500 nits compared to 1,000 for normal everyday use. You don't have to have HDR to make use of this brightness. And this, along with the better anti-reflectivity, is going to make a big difference using it outside or in bright environments. Now with that, if you're watching videos, movies, HDR content, I mean the difference is massive here. We might even still be blowing up that top camera that I turned down. I mean, this looks dark, it looks gray, a lot more flat, where this is so vibrant. Um, we went from having the mini LED on the 12.9 and still LCD, to the best tech in the world on an 11 inch iPad. You guys see that brightness difference. Both are running in HDR. That just literally looks fantastic. The blacks are perfectly black, not gray. It just looks crazy good. And if you're watching a movie at night, my goodness, this is crazy. I don't know if our cameras can capture everything, but with the LCD, you have the gray bars on the top and bottom. Anything black looks gray compared to with the tandem OLED, blacks are pure black. The bars on the top and bottom of content, pure black. The brights are so much brighter, they might be blowing out our camera, but in the reality, what I'm seeing, you're going from tech that's been around for 10, 15, 20 years to the best tech in the world. This looks so good. Not only the contrast, also the colors are very vibrant, so rich. This looks like this drink is right in front of me and I wanna grab it. Now the new iPad Pros also offer a nano texture for a hundred bucks, but you have to buy a one terabyte or higher model. And based on what we've seen online, it actually ruins this beautiful tandem OLED screen, gets rid of those pure blacks. So what I would recommend instead is a matte screen protector from our sponsor Paperlike, which protects your screen, softens reflections, and unlike nano texture glass, Paperlike uses tiny micro beads called called nano dots that add resistance and improve haptic feedback of your Apple Pencil, so it feels like you're actually writing on paper. So Paperlike Screen Protector 2.1 is the best alternative to nano texture glass, especially since you don't have to spend 100 bucks on top of having to buy the one terabyte storage model. So order Paperlike for iPad today by using the link in the description below.
And speaking of the Apple Pencil, the new M4 iPad Pro launched alongside the Apple Pencil Pro, which you have to buy. You can't use the old one because of their new landscape cameras. But thankfully, it is the same price and it is way better. Right here, we have this pop-up showing the new squeeze feature. I love this new feature where you just squeeze and you get a haptic feedback so you feel when you actually activate it. And then you can go in and you can select what you want. And then just by pressing again, it gets rid of that menu and you're gonna get such smooth performance with this new Apple Pencil. And if you didn't know, with the IPS screen on here, it had 54 milliseconds of delay, even though the Apple Pencil 2 had nine, you're not getting all the performance, where now with Tandem OLED, it's only five milliseconds. With the Apple Pencil 2, you can tap to switch between two tools, but you still have to go into this menu to go and access your settings. It does have hover here, so you can see what's going on. But with the Pro, it's crazy that there's actual fake reflections showing you the angle and where you are working. Now with it, you guys see this barrel roll. So I can start drawing like this. I can roll it for a skinny one, roll back. So if you're a good artist, unlike me, that is gonna be very useful. And the coolest part is that the Apple Pencil Pro has Find My Support. I have lost these pencils so many times, but now you can easily find it. And now let's talk about the Magic Keyboards. Because of the new magnets, you also can't use the old Magic Keyboard with the new iPad Pro. You have to buy the new one, which sucks to spend the money, but let me tell you, the new one is so much better. Now, if I go and line these up, you guys can see how much further the screen is away from me. That's because the whole design is lighter and they added the function row right over here and having that escape key right here, let me make sure you guys can see it, is so nice to have along with brightness, you have your speaker controls, all these functions, instead of having to go in, raise your hands from the keyboard and access the touch screen. Now with that, you guys can see the trackpad is also a little bit larger and it is a magnetic force trackpad. This one wasn't bad, but also not great. It's very clicky where this is just like having a MacBook. The new Magic Keyboard also allows the screen to tilt back more so than the old one, which I would constantly try to push just a little bit more. And that is because we have a whole new hinge on the back here, it is all aluminum and that is really nice. And with that, the old one would limit charging to 20 watts. Whereas with the new one, I got over 30 watts. Apple quotes it as up to 60, uh, but you're no longer limited uh, with the performance compared to plugging into the actual iPad itself. And then another big selling point, all of this at the top is aluminum as well. That is so nice. It feels so much more premium. And overall, this is just a much nicer keyboard. We actually did a full detailed video on this. So if you guys wanna check that out, we will have it linked at the end. And this is the front facing camera on the M2 iPad Pro. One of the biggest issues, it looks like I'm not paying attention, even though I'm looking right at the display where you would look if you're on a conference or recording a video. And this is the M4 iPad Pro. Pro's landscape camera. So I'm using the keyboard right now, looking up. This makes it just so much better than what we had before. And because of new software, Smart HDR 4, it looks better as well. And you guys let me know which one sounded better in terms of microphones. Now, like I mentioned, the M4 iPad Pro no longer has the ultra wide, but I almost never use that. And let me know as far as the regular photo, which one looks better. And Apple also said that with the new flash, you get better quality document scans. So let me know if that actually looks better to you guys. And now let's get into performance. And I wanna start out with the storage. The nice thing about the new one, even though you pay more, it starts out with 256 instead of 128. So let's go ahead and see the performance difference. Now, in terms of read speed here, you guys can see it's almost the same, but in terms of the write, it's almost double the performance, which would have been the same if you would have upgraded the M2 iPad Pro. 
Now, as far as the processors here in Geekbench 6, you see both have eight gigs of RAM. Now, if you spend more money and get at least a terabyte, you will get 16. And the M2 will run at 3.49 gigahertz compared to 4.4, that is a big difference. I'm gonna go ahead and start our CPU test right here and let you know that this is the nine core model. The M2 was an eight core CPU. Now we have two extra efficiency cores, but you get one less performance core unless you get a one terabyte which is just crazy expensive now we did a full comparison on the differences in performance so if you guys want to check it out we'll have it linked at the end it's a very interesting video all right we have our performance numbers and man this is insane with the m4 for single core it is 42 percent faster actually slightly faster than that and the m4 beats out everything including the fastest overclocked intel water-cooled processors and in multi-core it is 32 percent faster even though we only have three performance cores compared to four of them now as far as graphics let me run this test the core count is pretty much the same. We have 10 cores on both of these, but we are now using a second gen three nanometer process compared to the M2, which is pretty much five nanometer, slightly better. Now, in terms of graphics, the difference isn't as big. We have a 16% difference because we have the same amount of cores, but it is more efficient. And this is for general compute. Now, one big difference is that we now have ray tracing and we have a lot of other improvements so I'm gonna test out Solar Bay here in 3D Mark, which is gonna use ray tracing. Not only should it be faster, but also way more efficient instead of just using software ray tracing. And look at this, guys. The difference is 58 FPS compared to 32.4. That is 80% better performance when you're doing ray tracing and it uses way less battery life. Now, if you are going to be gaming, that is where we're gonna test out Wildlife Extreme. This is the 20 minute stress test to see if we're gonna get any more thermal throttling with the extra performance. And here the performance differences are much bigger. Instead of 16% in metal, this is a 35% difference in performance for our best score, 63.58 compared to 85.57. But if we look at our lowest score after these have thermal throttled, we actually have a 45% difference in graphics performance. So even though this thing is thinner and that has better performance, it actually does not throttle as much as the M2 version does. It is better in every single way, and that is a relief, and it's using less battery at the same time. And now I wanna get into a few real world workflows. Here I have Lightroom Mobile with 50, 42 megapixel images that are downloaded to the device. These are raw, they all have effects that are applied to these photos. We know that the M4 is faster, so let's go ahead and see what kind of difference we get. And we're almost done with the exports here, so I busted out my thermal cam, and you guys could see we're at 38 degrees Celsius on the M2, 39 on the M4, and the circle of heat being spread out is actually much wider, and that shows us the better dissipation system that Apple actually put effort in with the M4 so that heat is being pushed out throughout the chassis instead of being stuck. All right guys, that is done and the M2 took three minutes, 24 seconds compared to two minutes, 34 seconds. So the M2 took about 34% longer to do this task. Now, I know some of you guys are gonna say, well, we should wait for iPad OS 18. Well, when that comes out, we'll do another video It's and we'll see how much faster do these new iPads get with that software. And now I have Final Cut Pro opened up right here. I know a lot of you guys ask for this and here I have uh, almost eight minute project. This has a bunch of different clips in it and I have effects and corrections on all of these clips. Now we know the compute graphics performance, we only had a 16% difference. That's not a lot of extra overhead for titles and effects, but we wanna see, did Apple change the encoders or decoders on the new M4? So we have our 4K project, all the settings are the same, and let's see what happens. All right guys, we have our time and I was hoping for a little bit of a better difference, but we have three minutes and two seconds compared to three minutes and 29. So the M2 iPad took 15% 
longer. And I don't think the encoders got updated as far as speed, uh, but we do have a little bit of extra graphics performance. We saw 16% computes, so it could be that. But I also do wanna mention that with the new iPad, we can finally edit HDR videos on an 11 inch device with an LCD, you can't do that properly. And the color accuracy is way better as well. So if you're doing video work, it's not gonna be a lot faster, but it's gonna be a lot more capable if you need um, high quality video editing that is accurate. So with that said, how much better is the M4 iPad Pro compared to the M2? Well, I think you guys saw for yourselves, it is a lot better in almost every single way. And I know a lot of people held out and they kept their 2018 iPad Pros because not much really changed, especially on the 11 inch that stuck with the LCD. But now we actually have a solid reason to update. Now it sucks having to buy a new Apple Pencil or a new keyboard and spending more money. But if you're gonna keep this device for three, four, five years like you did with your previous one, it is well worth the extra money compared to buying a discounted M2 iPad Pro. So I would highly suggest getting the new M4 version. It's great and it's gonna last a long time. You guys let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. What surprised you about our detailed comparison? And go ahead and click that circle above to subscribe. We have a lot more great videos coming up. And check out those two videos that I already mentioned in this video. This has been Max and I'll see you in the next one.